Yes, yeah, 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 no worries. Yeah. Well, it is 11 o'clock actually. Just say quick. Good morning, good morning, good morning. One, two, three. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Good to welcome you into the church this morning. If you'd like to uh, grab your coffees and come and join us, we're going to worship in just a few moments. Uh, we're champion at the bit to, uh, to begin our worship. So if you want to join us, that would be great. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. So, as, as oh, good morning, everybody. So, as Steve said, feel free to grab your coffee, your chamomile tea, I don't know, whatever, your gluten free biscuit, and come on, uh, come on, find your seat, and we're going to just. We're just going to start from a point of praise, really. Praising God for who he is and what he's done. And that doesn't mean that we um, ignore the world around us, in, you know, and, and, and the challenges that we face in our own lives. It just means that we, we, we shift our, our focus a little bit and remember who God is in all of that. So we're going to start by singing this song, We Praise You. So feel free to stand and sing with us if you
Well, good morning, everybody. If you want to take your seats, that'd be great. Um, not sure I'm, am I on in terms of microphone? I think I am now. Good, great, great to welcome so you here. You. Um, Congratulations. Is this what caused all the... <sighs> so, we are now in week four uh, of our oh, Talking Grace Jesus series. And uh, Grace, where are you, Grace? No. Oh, she's gone. Looks like I know. Where, 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 where are you hiding? Uh, but Grace, Grace is going to be speaking. Oh, there she is. She's at the back. Uh, Grace is going to be speaking to us today on uh, on a verse from One Peter, uh, which is a really, really interesting verse. So that's going to come fairly soon. But before we do that, Why do, you need me? do you remember how we always do some really important things at the very beginning of our of our service? <laughs> we get people out who are doing some really important stuff, and we've got some really important things happening, haven't we? So do you want to come and join us? Be brave. <laughs> you can see her face. She's full of joy at this. Um, so, do you want to grab that if you can? So, what, what's happening? What, what's going on? Um, me and the two girls, we're doing a 5K race for Sands, which is um, a charity for baby loss away. Oh, gosh, a really serious, serious thing to, to be thinking about. And uh, you're running 5K? Yeah? Have you done it before? I did a poppy run. I did a poppy run. So, so you're experienced hands at this. Yeah. So we, we, so we want, we, there's two reasons for them coming out. One is because we want to thank you for doing this because it's such a brilliant thing to do. And I think there's other people doing it as well. And they've got a sponsor form. So they're going to be at the back. So if you get a form under your nose, then they'd love to be sponsored. That'd be great. So, so our prayers go with you. Thank you ever so much, Steve. So let's give them a clap before we yes. even start. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. No, I just go to Plymouth, yeah. You'll be aware that Chris, our organist, is, uh, is leaving us, oh. our music director, leaving us just in two weeks' time. Uh, there's, a, there's a card at the back. If you want to it's sign right, it, then please do. It would be great to have as many people doing that as possible. Um, Liam. Liam at the back is waving his hand. Uh, we've got a video which we're going to show in a few moments. So I'll keep... No, it's not happening yet, but... Uh... Oh. I want to go. I'm nearly 17, nearly. But if you're, um, if you, if you yourself or you know somebody who's between about age, age eight and 17, and you want to come to Spree, um, then Liam's got a Liam at the back's got a, a sign-up form. It just gives you information. You have to sign up to go. You're not signing on the dotted line, so we can give you information. Please do not worry about the money, OK? There is a charge for doing something. If you can pay it, that's great. If you can't, we do not want anybody not to be able to go because of the money situation. So please, if you're interested or any of young people are interested, do let us know because it's a really, really brilliant thing to go. We went last year, didn't you? Yeah, excellent. So we're old hands at doing this. Now, um, I went on a reconnaissance mission yesterday. Anybody who's ever been in the force of a reconnaissance mission is where you go and you, you go into something which is really quite dangerous to make sure that, that, that people are going to survive. So we've got, a, we've got a men's curry event happening in two weeks' time, and uh, Darren and I went to the Everest last night just to see whether it was OK, and we survived. So it is OK, chaps. So on the 18th of... Um, October, uh, we meet. It's a men's curry evening down there, and Darren has negotiated a brilliant discount. So, if you're interested, then either call me afterwards, or you can go on the website and find it on events. We might even be uh, sending it out on church suite to you as well. So, it'd be great to join us down there. Loads of people are coming, and it's, I think it's 15 quid for for the evening plus any drinks, and that's lots of food. So, do join us there. Finally, I've got some bands of marriage to, to read out between Joshua, Benjamin Butt and Harriet, Emily, Toms, both single, Joshua, the parish of Pencilwood and Harriet of the parish of Wincanton. It's the second time I've asked this, and if anybody knows any reason why they can't be married, you are to declare it now. Isn't that great? 
So we're going to pray for them in a minute, uh, and we're going to pray for ourselves. But just before we pray, in fact, do you want to stand now as we get ready to pray? Do you remember that we've been thinking so much about um, what it means uh, to have Christ crucified for us? And these verses uh, for 1 Corinthians 1, uh, verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. At the center of our faith, at the very heart of our faith, is Christ crucified for us, saving us from our sins. And it goes on to say that some people find this really hard, but, but we want to explain to them why it's not hard, don't we? We as Christians, we, all, you, all of you are saints in the name of God, and we want to tell people why faith in God, it will set them free from everything they've got holding them back. So it might be a stumbling block, but it needn't be. It might sound like it's foolishness, but it needn't be. And you go, and Paul goes on to say, do everything for the glory of God. Everything for the glory of God. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to worship God. Our children are going to go out in our, our second song, so we're going to pray for them. So let's, let's pray now, shall we, as we get into that mode of worship. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Joshua and for Harriet. We pray you'll bless them as they get ready to be married. We thank you for our young people, for their leaders. Lord, will they learn about you? And Lord, as we worship now, as we worship, Lord, help us to understand that great mystery that you died for us. Because we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But we're going to worship now because we do everything, everything for the glory of God. Amen.
there's no weapon. Oh, there's no weapon stronger than your love. There's no weapon stronger than your love. No height, no depth can overcome. There's no weapon stronger than your love. There's no weapon. to you today no matter how we're feeling no matter what's going on all around us Lord we can come to you and we can know that your love overcomes everything there's nothing that is stronger than your love pray today as we as we worship you that we would we would feel more and more of the power of your love today in our lives
Just one, it's just a pause, and I have a, I have a kind of sense that maybe some of us that resonates with us. You know, maybe it's a, a that we're struggling to face the day. Maybe it's that we're struggling with the fear that overcomes us. So Lord, I just I just want to create a little bit of space for, for just that we could bring those fears, bring bring whatever's going on to you today, Lord. Because it says in that song, when we see you, we find strength. It's your strength, Lord. It's not our strength. We're not the ones who have to do it. We need you. Lord, I just pray for each and every one of us today, just as we're, as we're here, as we're worshiping you, and particularly if we're in a place where we're struggling to face the day, or got things on our mind that affect all kinds of things, maybe affect our health. give it to you today, Lord, because in your presence, all of this stuff can get washed away. When we give it all to you, when we, when we say, here, Lord, you take control of my life. i 
spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Um, this song's been on my heart for the last couple of weeks and I think it's to do with um, letting, letting go of things and letting, letting go of ourselves and, and giving ourselves to, to Jesus, to God. You know, he is the holy and anointed one. So I don't know, I don't know if, I, if any of this resonates with anybody, but when you... When if you feel like you've got to be the holy and anointed one, then the pressure's on, isn't it? You've got to be the one who, you know, um, solves problems, is there for everybody, that kind of thing. And that can be a real pressure. Um, and I just, I just feel like as we sing this song again, just just to give that to God along with the other things that we were talking about to give that to God because he he is the one he's the holy and anointed one the risen and exalted one not us we we can just give ourselves to him and we can just worship him with ourselves and yeah anyway I'm, I'm rambling but I just uh, Lord we want to use this um this song as a prayer. We want to give ourselves to you. It's real. It's not uh, just a nice song about you. So Jesus.
When, uh, when I was saying earlier that he was he was rambling, and he wasn't rambling, because you know even even the greatest poets when they try and think of love they they can't get their words out and they write loads and loads of stuff just trying to understand. What, even Shakespeare couldn't explain it. And now we're talking about God, who not only is love but is grace and all. So when we try and understand God, we're, we're going to ramble and try and. Your name is like honey on our lips, and he's water to our soul. And whatever word we come up with, it's not enough, is it? It's not enough. We try and understand who God is, and out it comes, and we think. So let's just do that. Let's just spend a few moments now, maybe in silence now, in real just silence, and just think, who is God? Who is God? We don't know, but we can we can try and understand. Jesus, Jesus, holy and anointed. Amen. 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 Why is it amazing when we try and get into the mind of God and we try and understand who he is? Just, just blown away, really. Well, talking of blown away, poor old Grace um, shouldn't be here this morning to preach this because uh, we're supposed to have Ian Thompson, Ian and... Um, Christine sadly got COVID, which is why they're not here. So Grace has very kindly um, uh, agreed to preach this morning at the 11 o'clock as well as the 9.15. So thank you, Grace. Um, do you want to come and join us? Cause, uh, and I'm sure you know that... Um, we well, see, the thing is, when you're a vicar, Grace, <laughs> when you're a vicar, we all know that Grace is trained to be a vicar now, don't we? Do we know? We do now. Woo! Things get dumped to me at the last minute, so I've got no sympathy at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I might have sympathy, but I have got a prayer. Thank you. Which is what we need, really, isn't it? So I'm going to pray for you now. Lord Jesus, we thank you for grace. Thank you for the work she's put into this. And thank you for her willingness to serve you, even when she wasn't expecting it. And uh, I thank you, Lord, for this uh, amazing word that she's got for us about what it means to have on our hearts 
how we can explain to others about you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and anoint her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Am I on? Yeah? Okay, good. So we've had an interesting morning with microphones, some of which you know about and some of which you don't, probably. <laughs> so, we're looking at um, our Talking Jesus series, and we're on the week which has this verse in it. This is from the New Living Translation, because I just thought it really put it nicely. Um, so that's from 1 Peter 3.15, and I'm just going to read um, from 1 Peter. So if you want to follow along in Bibles, please do. Um, I'm going to read from verse 8. So 1 Peter chapter 3, from verse 8. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. And I read that from the NIV, in case anyone was thinking that was a bit different from up there. Um, all these different translations are useful in their various ways. And um, I sometimes like to do that, particularly when you've just been given a verse to preach on. It's actually to see what are other translations saying, how's the wording looking like? So if anyone here isn't in a life group, um, I just got to encourage you to join one because I love our life group. It's absolutely brilliant. I, it's a, a weekly joy for us in our household. And as life groups, we've been following this Talking Jesus course. We've been doing it on Sunday mornings as well. And I wasn't with you last Sunday morning, but I did watch online. I caught up later on. And I just thought Ian was fantastic. He was called Ian, wasn't he? Yeah. I just thought he was brilliant, and I thought, do you know what? What he did last Sunday is the example for this sermon today. So I'm sorry if you missed it, but if you missed it, go onto YouTube. You can still see it. Um, probably more worthwhile than listening to today's, to be honest. But it is an example of what I'm talking about today, really. I want to start with worship Christ as Lord of your life, because... That's the foundation stone of everything else that I'm going to talk about, but it's also the foundation stone of our faith, isn't it? That's why we come to church on a Sunday morning, to come to worship Christ, who is Lord of our lives. I don't know everybody that comes to this service. I know many of you, but I don't know every single person. And I wonder where we all are on our journey I know some people have been Christians for a really long time, but I wonder if there are others amongst us who are still just kind of wondering about it, still trying to work it out, see who this God is. And I wonder, maybe there might even be some of us who've been Christians for a little while, but we're in a season where actually we're questioning again, who is God? It's really important that we have that in our mind before we start looking at the second part of the verse. Who is this God that we're talking about? And as Steve just said, we can't know him fully. We can only know him in part, and that's part of the beauty and part of the mystery of God. And that it doesn't matter how long you are a Christian for, you're always getting new understanding, new learning of who this God is. And of course, we understand who God is through the lens of Jesus Christ. So who is God? Well, for me, God is a dear father who cares about the detail of my life. A dear father who cared so much, not just about me, but the whole of his creation, that he sent his son Jesus to come into humanity 
as human to live and walk amongst people, the created people. That that God, in his amazing love and wisdom, sent his son Jesus to die. And in his death, he gathered up all the sin and sickness, the dirt, the mess, the evil, the tragedy, all, the, all those things of our lives, he gathered them up on that cross and took them down to the grave. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west, we can be no further from our sin than Jesus has taken it. And that same Jesus rose again. And actually it would all be foolishness if he didn't. But he rose again and is now seated on the right hand of the Father. And I read something recently that described that as Jesus who has walked in our shoes on earth is now sat next to God the Father. And he intercedes for us. When we pray, when we call out to him, whether that's we're on our knees and we're formally in prayer or whether that's just as we're going about our day-to-day -day life and we're going, oh no, Lord. Jesus is hearing that and he's interceding for us because he knows what it is to walk in our shoes. And even in those times when we don't have words for our prayers, at the moment when I open the BBC News app, which is my way of connecting with the news, <laughs> I spend 10 minutes reading headlines and just saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I've got no more words than that. So we come together to worship him. Worship Christ as Lord of your life. Is Christ Lord of your life? Do you know what that means? And if you don't know what that means, I want to invite you today to find out. So if there's anyone here who's thinking, I don't think I've yet asked Jesus to be Lord of my life, don't leave this morning without having to, spoken to someone. There's Steve and I, but there's a whole raft of people here who would be very happy and actually really privileged to have that conversation with you. Worship Christ as Lord of your life. And then we have this next bit. If you are asked about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. Are we ready? So when Peter wrote this, it was a time of um, the early church just kind of getting going and there was a lot of persecution. He was talking to people who were suffering in ways that we probably don't know about and we hope that we never really will. That's the context in which it's cased. People who are being persecuted for their faith. And Peter is saying, worship Christ as Lord of your life. Make the main thing the main thing. Put Christ first. And always be ready to answer when you're asked about your faith. Peter later on, as I'm sure many of you know, went on to be not just persecuted himself, but he was crucified for his faith. And he took, a, wow, just this most amazing step where he said, I don't want to be um, crucified as Jesus because that's making me the same as Jesus. So he was crucified upside down. So when you think about that, it's kind of a little bit hard to draw parallels, isn't it, to our own lives and, the, and what we're going through. And I know we have suffering, I know we have times of joy, but trying to think of those parallels, it's not always the easiest thing to do. But actually it's a really good challenge for us, isn't it? Because I don't know how you came to church this morning, and, and Niall was kind of saying that as well in, in the worship, you know, how, how we arrive at church um, isn't necessarily how we want to be in our spirits, is it? Because of life. But when we come and we have that chance to um, just drop everything that's happened. And I was privileged this morning. I walked out early um, before any of the chaos began. And poor Festo had to do, deal with the chaos and bring them to church. But when we get here, it's having that ability, isn't it, to drop all of that has happened um, in the week, in the morning before church and make the main thing the main thing and worship Christ 
as Lord of our, our lives. So we need to be prepared to give an answer to our faith. Always be prepared to give an answer. And um, I told a story at the 915, which I think I've sp said before, so I apologize if, if you've heard this before. But when I was younger, I was in my early 20s, and I was working in a hotel um, doing waitressing. And um, I'd obviously heard a really good talk because I <laughs> decided to pray, to ask God to give me opportunities to talk well of him. And, uh, <laughs> and that was really foolish because God answers prayer, if you didn't know. He answers prayer, and he answered that prayer. And that week, I had several opportunities to speak well of Jesus as people asked me really directly, why are you a Christian then, eh? Um, and I really regretted praying that. Um, and I didn't really have an answer. So I didn't have one prepared. I, d I tried to answer, but I didn't have one prepared. And um, I very reluctantly prayed that prayer since um, on a number of occasions, but really, really reluctantly, <laughs> because I, I just have this memory. It was that the first person to ask me was the breakfast chef. So we'd just done breakfast, if you like, just, you know, everyone was fed and watered and um, we were doing the cleanup and he just stopped me as I walked past the the pass you know where the hot food comes out and he said you go to church don't you Grace why are you a Christian then <laughs> right always be prepared <laughs> to give an answer and we have this thing don't we as British people we think well it's a private matter actually my faith it's private to me I don't think the Bible teaches that, actually. It's a very personal matter. It's a really personal matter because it's about a relationship with a living God um, through Jesus Christ. So it's really, really, really personal. But it's not private. Because Jesus also tells us to go out and tell others, doesn't he? And to baptize them in his name. And not to just go out a little bit, but to go out through Jerusalem, Judea, and the rest of the world, which kind of means Lascard. Plymouth and the rest of the world <laughs> so it's not it's not okay for us to keep quiet it's not okay for us to make our faith private that's not the plan that's not the intention it's not God's hope when we come to faith that we'll keep it to ourselves it's our hope that we'll give it away but the challenge that I've heard as I've been looking at this passage and preparing is well do I really get asked so it says, if you are asked about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. Well, do I get asked? And that's really challenged me. Because as Christians, we're called to be distinctive. We're called to be different. We're called to be salt and light. And we all know some salty people, and they're not that comfortable to be around, are they? But as Christians, we're called to be salt and light. And if you're salty, then maybe somebody would stop you, Grace, and ask why are you doing what you're doing or why are you a Christian? Why do you believe what you believe? So I've had that as quite a, a challenge. I did have an opportunity last week. Um, I don't know if I used it well. You can judge that. But I, um, I was at the train station in Plymouth trying to get a student rail card. And what I've understood is that when you're a student under the age of 25, it's very easy to get a student rail card. When you're a student over the age of 25, I shall not disclaim quite how over the age of 25 I am it's not very easy to get one <laughs> anyway so I was at the train station trying to organize that and the lady was being very polite and she said to me oh so what are you studying well, it was really hard to, to not give an answer to that so I kind of went oh yeah yeah I'm training to be a vicar um, and she was so delighted I don't know if this lady is a Christian or not a Christian, but she just said, oh, that's fantastic, that's wonderful. And then I said, well, actually, there's about 20 of us that pass through your station every Tuesday to go up to college. Um, you know, we're about, we may not seem that we are, but we are about. And then I said to her, I'll invite you to my ordination, so please hold me accountable to make sure I remember Yvonne at Plymouth Railway Station. But do we get asked, and if we don't, why don't we? And what are we going to do about that? That's another question. And are there times when it's easier to talk about our faith and times when it's harder? Um, and I was reflecting on that, and there's a song, a Wren Collective song, which some people will know, but I appreciate not everyone will, 
Um, it's the joy of the Lord is my strength. And when we were out in Tanzania and we came back to the UK, we used to um, do like a little short video. I'm sure you've seen missionaries do this. A little short video trying to sum up in three minutes what it is we, our lives were out in Africa. And, um, and one of them, we started, we, we had this music playing um, to it. And the, the start was brilliant because we'd managed to um, get hold sort of 10th hand um, through other missionary families, a trampoline. And our boys were jumping on the trampoline to the joy of the Lord is my strength. And it was just on the beat. I was so pleased, so pleased. So we had a really good video that time. Um, but the words are, are this, while there's hope in my heart, I will praise you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the darkness, I'll dance. In the shadows, I'll sing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And the truth is, as with everybody's lives, there were times out in, in, in our lives out in Tanzania that were absolute joy, and it was so wonderful, and what an honor and privilege to live there. And there were times where it was really hard, really, really tough. And the joy of the Lord was our strength. And so, yes, there are times, aren't there, when it's going to be easier to answer the question, but, and times when it's harder. But I wonder, actually, in those harder times when we're struggling more, whether the answer has more power. So how are we going to do it? I feel like I'm waffling on about, oh, yeah, well, you need to be ready. We need to be ready. But how? 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 Grace, how are we going to tell, um, speak well of our faith? How are we going to explain the hope that we have? You know, I love that verse, Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's what we're waiting for, isn't it? So I talked you through Jesus dying and the resurrection, but actually that's not where it ends for us, is it? Because that's the bit that gives us hope. Jesus has ascended to heaven, but we know that one day he's going to return. One day, and we're waiting for it, and when we watch the news, we think, is it tomorrow? My goodness. But one day he's going to come again, and you know the sleeping will rise. My life group know all about this because we've just written a poem for it for Advent, and that's another story I'll tell you about another time. But um, the sleeping in Christ will rise, and those of us that are still alive will be caught up in heaven. And that is our joy, isn't it? That is the hope that we're talking about. That's why we got out of bed on Sunday morning to come and worship in church, and we didn't go and watch a football match or I don't know whatever else there is to do on a Sunday. I've been in church so long, I've forgotten what you do on Sundays. But that's it, isn't it? That's the hope. That's what we're clinging to. That's why we keep going. That's what keeps us going when times are hard. We were preaching last week in a church in Devon. Sorry, everybody. Um, one of our church mission society churches that support us as a family. And um, that's kind of what we, that's what we were teaching on. We were saying it's about God sustaining us through all times, through when it's easy and when it's good. And listening and watching um, Corrie Ten Boom's story last Friday, those of you that came to church and saw that performance, it was breathtaking. And I don't say that lightly, it was breathtaking. But what I came out with, and I know, I already knew that story. I've, I've known, you know, I've grew up in the church, I've heard it lots of times. But still, what I came away with was how her faith sustained her. If you don't know about Corrie Ten Boom, ask somebody around you, they will know, and they will help you find the story. It's really good to know her story, as it encourages us. It was her faith that sustained her. So how are we going to tell our story? Well, we're talking Jesus, aren't we? That's the, the, the theme, that's our course. And I think the way that we answer, the, the way that we explain our hope is by telling our stories. We tell our story. Because that's the most engaging way. If someone says to you, why are you a Christian? And you, and you without any other um, input, you sort of flick through to John 3.16 and say, well, for God to love the world that he gave his only son. Well, it is an answer, but it's not an easy answer to digest. But when it comes in, in the casing or in the wrapping of a story of, I know that God so loved the world that he gave his only son because I've experienced that love and I've seen my life changed. And I know because this has happened and that has happened. And when I was in this situation, God intervened. And we've all got those stories. They're not all dramatic, lightning, thunder, boom, bam stories. And mine certainly isn't. But we've all got those stories. 
I grew up thinking I didn't have a testimony, and I think Niall has said this as well, because I grew up in a, in a Christian family, I grew up in church, I don't have a day when I definitely said I'm going to follow Jesus, I don't remember not knowing Jesus, but I do have times in my life where I said, hang on a minute, I've got to get serious here. Your story doesn't need to be awesome. It doesn't need to be, you know, like Ian last week um, from Tough Talk, that kind of transformation. Your story just needs to be yours. And when you tell your story, when you answer that question with your story, well, the reason I have that hope of Christian faith, the reason I trust in Jesus, the reason I hope that there is more to this life than there is, is because and you share from your life, I think that's when God moves. I think that's when when God's going to use you. And it says in that verse, to do it with gentleness and respect. I thought there was an ice cream van. Sorry, that's why I paused. (laughs) My antenna was up. Um, (laughs) Sorry. <laughs> wouldn't that be ace? Yeah, wouldn't that be brilliant if we all just ran out of church and grabbed an ice cream and came back in again? That would just, I'd love that. Anyway, I don't know what I was saying. Oh, about gentleness and respect. The thing is, when it's your story, you see, if you try and answer someone's question with some scripture um, without any casing of a personal story on it, you don't know who you're talking to. They might be a theologian from a secular university who then goes, no, that's wrong, boom, with all their theories and destroys your faith. But if you say to them, well, this is my personal experience of Jesus, that's your personal experience of Jesus. No one can take that away from you, but God can use it mightily. But also, if you're saying, this is my personal experience of Jesus, of course it's going to be done in gentleness and respect, because you're talking from your, your place of, hang on, this is what happened in my life. This is what I experienced. This is what I know of God. This is what God has shown me in my life. This is what I was like before I knew Jesus, or before Jesus worked on this area of my life, and, and now I'm different because of him. And one of the things about um, 1 Peter is, um, that most of the, many of the Christians sadly were persecuted and uh, many of them were murdered and I, I would already talked about Peter um, having died. But of course not everyone. And um, as you go on in history, not far on, you come across St. Augustine. Now most people have heard of St. Augustine. I think he's, I personally, I think he's the best saint. If there's a competition for saints, I think he's, he's number one. And um, there was a bit of an argument going on because some of the church leaders during that time of persecution, had renounced God. And then um, there was a bit of conflict over, well, should they still be allowed to be church leaders? If under persecution they renounce their faith, should we now allow them to be a church leader? (coughs) Discuss. No, don't discuss it. (laughs) It's an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? But what St. Augustine said is he said, God's grace is enough for them. God's grace is enough for them. And as we enter into this, as we enter into trying to explain what our faith is about, and because it's so much a part of us, it's so internal, it is so personal, but yet not private, it's sometimes hard to put it into words. As Steve was saying about love, it's hard to put love into words. Sometimes it's hard to put our faith into words, isn't it? But we can tell of our experience. We can tell our stories. And God's grace is enough If it was enough for those church leaders who gave up their faith in in the face of persecution, it's definitely going to be enough for us who've missed opportunities to answer this question well. And it's certainly enough that when we next try, God's going to use whatever it is we say. I really believe that. You know, we have got the story of the 5,000 where God used the, the loaves and the fishes and it was nowhere near enough for the people that were there. Well, sometimes our words just feel like they're nowhere near enough, don't they? But the grace of God is that he takes them anyway and he multiplies them and he uses them. And so don't be afraid. Don't, don't be worried that what you've said isn't enough because God's grace is bigger than that and his grace is enough for you and it's enough for me. But 
we do need to try and prepare ourselves. In the NIV, it says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. So it's not a bad thing if at some point this afternoon or later in the week, you take a moment to think, well, what would I say? What would my answer be? But let's not rehearse. Let's not rehearse an off-pat answer that we always give. Because I think our answer should always be in the context of the person we're talking to. That speaks into their situation from a situation that we've had. So, worship Christ as Lord and always be ready to explain about your hope in Christ. And what we're going to do, the band's going to come up, and I just think it'd be good for us to take a moment. One, to consider whether we want to pray for those opportunities, and two, if we do want to pray for those opportunities, to, to do that, to ask God that this week we would have those opportunities and that we would have the preparedness of heart to be able to answer for the Christian hope that we have. And there's going to be um, a prayer team at the end of the service that will be over on this side by the, the screen over there. If you'd like prayer specifically for that, if you'd love to be a bit more courageous, a bit bolder um, in sharing your faith, in talking Jesus, then um, head up, please do head over that way or find someone you trust and, and any, you know, they'll be willing to pray for you. So should we stand? I just want to encourage you, if you're willing to, um, to, to pray that prayer I prayed in my 20s when I was working in that hotel, that, that God would put people in your path this week that would ask you about your faith, that you would just put your hands out in front of you. Father God, we come, we know, we know that we don't have the perfect answers, we know that we often don't have the words to speak but we come open-handed and we ask Lord God that your Holy Spirit would so move in us so inspire our lips so inspire our minds that we would have an answer to that question and Lord we pray that this week there would be opportunities to speak well of you that people would notice that we are different and would ask, what's that all about? And that, Father, you would give us the words to answer their question. And God's just reminding me of a, um, it's a real life story that happened in the, in the late 1990s where in the, at the, um, there was a high school shooting in Columbine and um, a teenage girl with a gun held to her head was asked if she believed in Jesus and she said yes and that's a story I read in my late teens and it's, it's just lived with me ever since would I say yes God is asking you to say yes to him today if you've never said yes to Jesus I just want to encourage you in the quiet to say yes to him in your hearts Lord, I pray a blessing over those that have said yes for the first time or the hundredth time today. May you walk closely with each one of us today. This will be my story. This will be my song. You will always be my saviour. Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to sing this song that we have sung once or twice before. It was a new song. But I just really felt like it was uh, the right song to sing as a, as a response to what Grace has brought to us today. Um, if you don't know it, just feel free to close your eyes and just listen. And if you remember it and can pick it up quick, then feel free to sing too. But it's just all about remembering what God has done and then our response to that going forward.
so much we've been through today, so much we've learned today, so much in our, so much in our hearts that we have to digest, but I just want to read that verse again that the Grace was preaching from, it's another different translation, but the, it's just that first part that really spoke to me, but in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord, in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. And it's only then we get to, and then be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. To set apart Christ as Lord. So the band are going to carry on playing. We're going to sing one more song if you want to join in with it. Um, there's coffee at the back if you want prayer. There's people over there. But let's, uh, let's either stand or sit or go and have a coffee. Whatever you want to do now, we're going to sing now. And then let's pray our Lord. So let's, let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you've been with us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blessing upon us. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
praise together. Bless everybody.
Nice one, guys. <laughs> See? Spirit came. Spirit came.